Well, hey there, friends. Welcome to episode number 116 of It'll Be Fine, the socially distant baking food chat show. I'm your friend and your pal, Kelly Zemnikas. I'm so glad you're here today, as I'm glad you're here any day you pop by the kitchen. But today, this is extra special because my guest today, uh, the day the episode airs will be her birthday, which is awesome sauce. She doesn't know this yet. <laughs> You're welcome, Danny. Danny Brooks is on the show today. Oh my goodness. Danny is just the coolest of cats. She's a fellow chick with tattoos. You can't, you can't see mine here, but I got some here. If you're ever wondering what this is, uh, it stands for the initials of my nieces and nephews, L, Zachary, Charlotte, and Cohen. There you go. <laughs> I'm the best aunt ever. <laughs> but uh, my guest today, as I say, Danny also has some super cool tattoos. Uh, she's a fellow comedian, fantastic one at that, and a fellow baker. Danny owns and operates a business in LA called Period Pastries. If you go into the show description, I've got a link. And uh, if you're in the LA area, by all means, call this woman get her stuff get it it looks phenomenal as soon as i can get to la i'm ordering some eats from danny and what we are making today by the way is cannoli Ha-ha! frequently in my brain confused with cannelloni i also confuse mimosa and samosa but that's a whole other episode of it's not that fine but this cannoli, oh my goodness, I'm so excited to do this up. And on today's show, we are offering love, offering attention to brighten a day. Info on them is in the show description. So friends, get ready. You've got Kelly, you've got Danny, you've got cannoli. It's going to be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Right, so here's what we need for the homemade cannoli, which we are doing from a Food Network website. Chef Alex Garnaschelli, one of my faves. Uh, we are going to need eggs for this. We will need a white wine. I'm using a booze-free one because I'm not drinking at the mo. Um, we need lemon. We've got chocolate chips. There's some powdered sugar under there. We need some butter. Uh, it calls for allspice and cinnamon. I have clove and cinnamon, so I'll make it work. We need some canola oil. We've got our friend kosher salt here. We've got granulated sugar and all-purpose baking flour. That's it. My computer now. I think this seems... I don't. I don't printed it. I don't want to drink sauce. I don't want to drink sauce, but this seems like I can figure this out. I mean, I, <laughs> we'll see. I, um, I read it and I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. I've, I've, I've ate so many of these in my day. I feel like I can do this. And my writing partner, Pops, like, this is her favorite thing in the whole world. And so she, she's Maybe like, yeah, she's so very jealous. I don't have a mold, but what I do have is my mortar and pestle thingamajigger. I'm going to wrap it. You're smart. I'm like, I'm trying to like handyman this. So I'm going to wrap it around and then grab it with my tongs and dip it. That's the part that I did not think about though. So I have rings to cut them. Yeah. And, and I have the, these things, whatever these are, the shells to wrap them on. But, yeah. and I even got a thermometer for the oil, but I have no freaking, am I allowed to curse on this show by the way, or no? You can say fuck all the times you want on this show okay great i don't know how the fuck i'm gonna get those things out of the oil is what i'm trying to say what we're gonna I need have... to do first is prep the dough let it rest in the fridge for a few then we're okay. the filling letting that rest for about 30 minutes while uh -huh. we fry the shells so it's kind of like going back and forth a bit um okay <laughs> i don't know about you but i do not, i cannot successfully operate a piping bag um, I have, I have been working on that with the macarons that I make for my bakery. Um, I have been, I have one out. I have, okay. I don't know if you can see, can you see them? I have them hanging on the, no, I uh, my head, sorry. I have an obnoxious laugh. I have them hanging on the, 
my husband's looking into getting me something else to hang them on because he's very tall. So yeah. they don't hit me in the head when I wash the dishes, but they hit him in the head and he's like, I'm over this. But I have one here. I took one out. Yeah. And I, I would suggest no tip. That would be my suggestion. Okay. For the, for the, or do you have reusable or throwaway ones? The throwaway ones. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. And when you fill it, don't clip it until you fill it. So take the tip yes. out of your thing. But yeah, piping stuff is hard. I I I think that's half the reason my one cake failed yesterday because I had piped it with, uh, I don't even know what tip it was. I just, it's like Russian roulette when I get tips out to do icing. Whatever whatever the spirit moves me towards, I just, <laughs> I just pick it. <laughs> um, I also have on my KitchenAid thing, a um, attachment for oh, sifting yeah. and it's literally a lifesaver for, macarons and any larger cake oh my gosh could anything be worse my house has everything's in the dishwasher right now that's how you can tell it's been a busy baking weekend okay. so flour and then the sugar and then what else so yeah so it's two cups of flour one tablespoon of granulated sugar and yes. a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt yes i have all those things right here measured already mm -hmm. Lint. Okay, let me just get it. Yeah, sifting is a real, when it's not regular flour, it's a real pain in the neck. You know what? I'm You're right. The pork thing is good. Stuff can go all over my. Oh my I'm wearing a nicer shirt. Oh yeah, I guess I should put on me right. I know I'm. I have, I have, oh wait, I should show you the horrible apron that my mother bought for all of us. <laughs> I say all of us, meaning my sister um, and my sister-in-law, my brother's wife. Um, we call them the Weldy aprons, which is their maiden name, but they're hideous. Horrible apron for my mother. It's like mostly Whoa. like a weird painting vest, yeah. but this is like a very um, like South Jersey that's very like home economics teacher kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very like, it reminds me of like little, like South, South Philly, like Italians. Yeah. And my mom's only like a little bit Italian, but they still rock this. <laughs> they still rock this horrible thing, which I, I mean, I wear it when I make like spaghetti and stuff because it makes me feel like an old Italian lady when I wear it. But this one's my other one. <laughs> Thank you. It's... <sighs> It's old though, and I um, my kids have a matching one. Oh, it's yeah. very and it's like a little mini a mini version of it. Yeah. Next step is okay. to take our butter, uh, which she says should be cut into small pieces, and then work it together with your hands uh, until it becomes sandy. So this is the the two teaspoons of butter, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, I have mine. I have mine in the fridge. Yeah, so that it doesn't melt right away on me. Yeah, it okay. doesn't say, I mean, unless I missed it, it doesn't say to keep the butter like super chill, but mine's been a little cold just because of the thing. Until it becomes like sand with two tablespoons of butter, teaspoons of butter. This is, I can't even find the butter in here, can you? Can, or can you, is what I meant to say. I'm so confused by what's happening in my fingers. Does it feel like sand? I never, I never use my hands. Like when I make my, um, what are they called? My lemon labia bars. I, um, I use a pastry cutter, even though uh, the recipe I follow is a Scottish recipe. Right. And um, they tell you, like it's a Scottish legend or something. I don't know. They believe that when a woman uses her hands to knead shortbread, that it, it's like good luck or something. Oh, so I, okay. I don't know. I have Does it, it feels very relaxing. Yeah, you know, it feels, I, I used to live playing in sand as a kid. I don't know about you. Yeah. We had a sandbox. This is the that closest was... I've gotten to hugging someone. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Just ask my best friends. I'm so strict about that. They're always like, oh, you can use a liquid for your powders. I'm like, no, you can't. No, you can't. You can't. You're going to fail. Trust me. I The one thing I did excel at was um, 
the, the one class I didn't think I wanted to take was, they didn't call it home ec though, they called it something else, but it was the class where you, we made like apple crumb something or other. And I was really good at it. <laughs> yeah, we were, that was home ec for us. There was shop class, home ec, yes. and woodworking. No, shop and woodworking was the same. And then there, maybe it was just the two, but. You had to go to tech school where I come from in order to do shop, like in high school anyway. But they had a they had a class for, you know, all of your women's work, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> we also learned. Did we learn how to sew in there too? I think it was mostly just cooking, yeah. like because she would ask us. She was a cool teacher. She would ask us what we wanted to do, and so we would always be like, "Food. We want to do food." My, uh, okay. I'll show you this here. I am. Um, I made this in eighth grade shop class. <gasps> my, my letter opener. I made this Looks in eighth grade. And a did friend, you also kill someone with it or? <laughs> that's what my friend said a few years ago. He's like, you realize you made a shiv? You did, you made a shiv. <laughs> Have you been to prison? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Send help. <laughs> Ellie's gonna kill someone. So okay, I don't know. It still feels like flower to me, but it kind of, I don't know. Can you it's, see? It's, it's yes. very flowery. This maybe is like, sand from like the Bahamas that's maybe smoother. Oh, I don't know. It's just one tablespoon plus. So maybe I am supposed to put the other tablespoon in here. I put it all in and I even oh, okay. I need more. That might be my that might be my problem here. Maybe. <laughs> because the one they said to cut into little pieces, so I did that, but then this one's in big. Let's get this one. Sorry. Yeah, no. I I'm here to ruin everything for you today. That's what I've been doing this weekend successfully. So that's why this show is called It'll Be Fine. There you go. There you go. That's, oh, that's a great name for a show, by the way. And thanks for having me, too. I didn't I'm say so that. I'm glad yet. you're doing this. Oh, my God. Me, too. I love baking. This is fun. This is fun. All righty. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm behind on the butter thing because I didn't put all of it in. But now I see what it's supposed to look like. As I go through this, it's getting, yeah, I would say this is sand from a beach that's way too out of my budget. <laughs> yeah, somewhere, somewhere where the ocean is a different color, like an unbelievable color, right? Yeah, yeah. Like when I see the prizes on Wheel of Fortune, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wheel of Fortune, I used to watch that so much as a kid. I don't watch it anymore now. I want to audition to be a contestant because they like. You should. They like Canadians do it. They love, don't they, do they, well, I don't know if they travel still with COVID. I remember they used to go like everywhere. They used to, yeah. And now on the show, because I'm an avid watcher, like seven to eight is my Jeopardy Wheel of Fortune hour. Like, uh, yeah. That's it, so funny. I, really I feel like my my grandmother made you talk about that. She's, um, <laughs> she used, she was so nuts with um, uh, Wheel of Fortune. She used to be the person who would like, uh, write in and do the, you know how they would have you like contests and you would yeah. write in and stuff. She did that. Yeah. Only, <laughs> only in the past few years, they've allowed Canadians to enter those contests. Uh, previously you would see on the bottom of the screen, not open to Canada, but for some reason, the rules in the province of Quebec are different. So those contests are open to Canada, except if you live in Quebec. No doubt. What? Yeah, you can't. Nope. It's crazy. I get them confused all the time. And I also get um, mimosa and samosa confused. Yes. And samosas are made of potato. Is that right? Yes. And the other one's a drink. Yes. I'm trying to figure out how to make a mimosa macaron, as a matter of fact. A little insider, little insider information for you. Oh, my gosh. That sounds amazing. What do you think? I was thinking about like a champagne buttercream that goes in the middle and then an orange shell that tastes like oranges. Yeah, that or I'm thinking something like grapefruity in color, like Ooh. a nice like light pink or... Ooh. Yes, like a rose, rose colored maybe instead of orange. I feel like orange treats aren't as popular. Mine is not smooth. I don't know about you. I'm using the KitchenAid here. Oh, you are? You're smart. I'm using my hands like a dummy. It's a weird texture. It's yeah, I'm just going to keep, I'm going to just keep going at it. It's seeming to get better the more I go at it. 
Mine as dirty as that sounds. Mine feels quite a bit like Play-Doh. Yes, it's very dry. Very dry. Okay, good. All right, good. Okay. I think we're on the right track, though. Mine's, and also I've got, because I'm using my hands, yeah. some of the wetter stuff is sticking yeah. to my knuckles, to my little it, fat it, fingers. This doesn't say that it feels like a dry dough, but this is a dry dough. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. What does it say? A soft dough, though? What does it say? It says smooth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, use that as you will. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Seems um, like it needs more wine. Up, next up will be to wrap this. Uh, spread. Okay. Spread on a plastic. Spread. Lit. Spread a piece of plastic wrap on a flat surface and place the dough in the center. Wrap around loosely. Let it rest in the fridge for a few minutes. Okay. Mine's still, I'm still working mine here. All the pieces haven't come together yet. It looks like a Did you use the hook? Is that what you used was the hook? No, I just, uh, just used this guy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't used the hook yet. That's what I was asking. I have not either. I've only ever used the that what they call that the paddle, I think, right? Yeah, the paddle and the whisk are the ones I do. This does uh, look like a brain to me, or like a head of cauliflower. <laughs> oh, see, mine does. Yours looks way better than mine right now. Oh, I wonder if I should throw it in. Should I throw it in and give it a try in the mixer? Oh, well. yeah. It's great um, that usually people don't get to see what a, a hot mess I am. So you're really getting a. <laughs> A sneak peek into just how klutzy and scary it is when I'm by myself in the kitchen here. Okay, let me see if I can get it back into an actual dough ball. All right, so I'm going to stick this puppy in the fridge. You are ahead of me, girl. That's so yummy. That is my dad's jam. My dad makes amazing pies, and I keep wanting him to bake with me on the show, and he's like, I'm busy. It's like, what are you doing? Aww. <laughs> is that where you get your, your uh, cooking bug from as your dad? Definitely. Yeah. In my family, dad is like the kitchen guy. He's the one making stuff like very like MacGyver, like taking this to make this go together. Um, That's he's awesome. That way. And my mom is the one you go to for like car advice. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. It's pretty cool. I would, say that, I would say that neither of my parents are experts in the kitchen, but they both... Yeah, I mean, my, my mom makes, she's like the dinner and lunch person. And my dad, on the when, he, when he's not teaching or whatever, on the weekends, he used to make breakfast for us. That was okay. his thing. The omelets. He thinks he's like the omelet king. What would be a signature dad omelet? Oh, um, really fancy. Uh, <laughs> probably <laughs> some thick slices of American cheese folded into some eggs. Yep. Mm -hmm. nothing special but he does it he nails it every time perfect melt perfect melt you know lots of butter so the eggs taste amazing yeah and uh if he was to make it for himself he would probably have scrapple on the side which i don't know if everybody knows what that is i do know what scrapple is ah okay cool some people don't when i yeah. mention it it's gross is what i think it is but my dad loves it if i if, if it's it's a animal fat correct it is like worse than a hot dog is the way I could describe it to you. It's like mixed meat in a, it comes in like a rectangle square log and you slice it and then you, well, he used to egg wash it and flour it and then fry it on the pan. Huh. Well, yeah, that's, it, that's a, the exact, your reaction is exactly what yeah. it should be. <laughs> we need two cups. And then it's the powdered sugar and the ricotta just get mixed together. Uh, first, uh, first up, the ricotta, and then the powdered sugar, the cinnamon, the allspice. Oh, oh I already skipped a step, but we'll see how or it goes. It's, it's all going to end up in your stomach. It doesn't matter. I think it's going to be fine, just like your show says, right? Exactly. It'll all be fine. Everything will be fine. Okay, so one teaspoon, right, of the cinnamon? I will say for this recipe was the first time I watched the video on how to make something. I never... The fact that I even read this is a miracle. I don't read <laughs> I'm really, really glad that you are reading it to me, to be honest, because I have terrible vision and my contacts are really acting up today. And so it's like, I, I would be breaking my neck to read it. Okay. 
all spice. I, which is not my favorite spice, but that's okay. Here we go. I will. I will confess to you. I am using clove and cinnamon. See. Mm -hmm. You're looking very brown. Mine is looking brown. Yeah. Okay. It definitely is. Uh, which is not what the picture looks like. No, but it tastes good. It tastes like familiar, so that's good. Oh, that tastes really good. That tastes like the filling, oh. all right. Oh, yeah. Now, some people back home put marscapone in to make it less oh. chunky. Okay. And I have some of that too, but I'm going to follow the recipe this time. All right. Fair enough. The next so thing we need to do in a supper bowl is to beat heavy cream um, and then fold the cream into the ricotta and then add the chocolate chip. Oh, we're mixing the chocolate chips in. Interesting. Yeah. I used to um, eat them where the cream was in the middle and then they dipped the ends in chocolate chips. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, this seems to uh, have us in further. I like it. I like it. There we go. But yeah, this does taste it's it's yummy. yummy. Okay, so they, it wants us to whip it and then fold it in? Because, yeah, it says to whip the cream, the heavy cream, um, okay. and then uh, fold in to the ricotta, and then stir in your chocolate chips, zest the lemon, stick that all in the fridge. Oh, the lemon. Yeah. I, need, I did not bring out a lemon. Do you have lemon? That can work too. No, no, I think I have one in the fridge. I just forgot oh. to, like, I tried to behave and have everything ready. Yeah. But I think all of my lemons are zested already. Oh, okay. Is it the zest of a lemon that we re that we require? Yeah. It does. Oh, wait. Although, oh, wait, I have it. <gasps> yeah. Yes. Although I, I, have I, say, I will say, when you look at the, the ingredients on the side, nice, nice. On the ingredients on the side, it just says lemon. You have to read it to know you just need the zest. Okay, well, we're in luck. I made a lot of lemon curd yesterday, so I have lots of, of the zest. All right, so for the heavy cream, we need a quarter cup. Yes. I was a good girl and got everything ready, like you said. Yeah. It definitely helps to do, I mean, even if you're just baking at home, having everything laid out before you get into it, mm -hmm. really saves your time. Really it does. Right. Now, if you don't want to make the filling at home and you want to be a cheapskate, you're welcome to, but you can use frosting. If you have frosting in your fridge, give her. <laughs> yep, okay. so true. You could just use anything, really. You really pudding. You could pudding like chocolate pudding is really good, and you can also make it like um, chocolate flavored. Absolutely. I'm folding in the cream, and then I'm gonna put. And then you're gonna stir the in chips. the chocolate chips. And How many chips do we need? Uh, it calls for a quarter. I think I can see quarter it. Quarter cup. Quarter cup. My vision. Cup. Oh, so it's the heavy cream that helps make it look a little bit lighter. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm giving it. What mine's looking like. Sound like quicksand. <laughs> yeah, it looks, yeah. I mean, I see why they put something on the end because it doesn't look pleasant. All right. Great. Let's see here. I have the tiniest grater. Oh, in the lemon. Oh, it's so cute. Is that a cheese grater? <laughs> I think it's for a child. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You can, um, you can peel, uh, what is it? Like white chocolate and dark chocolate. And you can, you can make chocolate shavings with it. I've never done it, but I saw it yeah. on a show yesterday. Have you done that? I have done that with a larger, uh, I've got a lot of cheese knives. I've got a friend who's a cheesemonger and I've done that with bars of chocolate. I've done like ribbons. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Bit. Are they having us chill this? Is that why we made this first? Yeah. So then we're going to chill this for about 20. Um, so not, in a bag, not in a bag yet. We're leaving it in this. Yeah. This just says, um, it doesn't say to cover it. So I think we just put the whole bowl in the fridge. 
while we make our cannoli. I'm so scared of this part. <laughs> I forgot already that we did the dough and it's in the fridge. Oh my gosh. I know. We're going this is on, flying by. We're going on to step three. Step four is fill the cannoli and eat the cannoli. We're, That's good. We're getting there. So what we're going to need to do, let's see here. So we're going to my face get confused? heat up uh, one quart of canola oil in the pan on the stove there for some frying. Um, okay. You want to get it to about 360 degrees Fahrenheit. So just take your thermometer, measure that out. And then in the meantime, while that's getting hot, we are going to roll out the dough until it's very thin, about one eighth of an inch thick. Okay. We're going to take a little round cutter as you have, or you can use a glass or whatever you got. Um, we're going to make about 24 circles. And then however you do it, you will then take that circle, wrap it around your mortar and pestle thingy or that and make that U-boat shape, cover it a little bit and then fry it, set it, let it cool. Do we, do we fry it with this in there? Well, let's see. Um, <laughs> Wrap this, wrap each circle around the mold. Use a little egg wash to seal it shut okay. so it won't fall off the mold. Oh, I think you you submerge the mold and the dough if I'm reading this correctly. Maybe I should turn it down a bit because it went a little bit over it. Yeah, are you just doing one at a time? I am. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm way too nervous to do more. Oh, yeah, me, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, okay, here we go. One going in. Uh, <laughs> and how long do I leave it in for? It says two to three minutes per side. You want to get a little bit of a golden brown color. Okay. So. Oh my God, I'm making a cannoli. Look at us. Boy, this must be what happens on those cooking shows where people get it right and then they can't get it off. <laughs> I wonder if I somehow like glued it on here with the uh, egg wash. I mean, it still should. You, I mean, you're right. It's kind of greasy with the oil. You think it would just. This is. I think I'm going to be eating metal. Is what's going to happen. Can you like? Fork it off around the top so it. I'm Hi, Jim. Hi. My cannolis came out nice, but I can't get them off of the metal. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. All right. We'll figure this out. Maybe when I do the next ones, I'll use less egg wash and see. Maybe. I think I, I think I glued it down onto the thing. I think you're just supposed to do it on the lip of it and not all around it. Does that uh -huh. make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I I think oh. I might be making like cannoli cannoli chips over here for a little bit. I'm sure <laughs> that's okay. I'm sure that's still fine. If I had my first one that might be well I don't know. I can't tell it's coming. I hear my garage door opening though. So just as I said, no children are touching hot oil. Here they come. They but they won't be able to get in the kitchen because I have the giant light right at the walkway of the kitchen. So <laughs> now I've got three. I got cocky. I have three in here at once. Oh, nice. Okay. Ooh. It's fine. Now do you know for the next 12. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> do I ever. You should see this corner of cannoli. <laughs> Crackers. What? Oh my gosh. They're very good though. They're really, they're, yeah. I had one just break in half. They are pretty damn tasty. Mm -hmm. You do it half on one side and half on the other. Yeah. So here we go. All right. I need a master at work. Oh yeah. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Oh my gosh. Oh nice. Who else we can do? You know what else you can do? 
what is sprinkle more of the powdered sugar. Powdered sugar, and then also they always put the chippies on the ends too. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. All mm -hmm. right. And then the powdered sugar, right? Yeah, you said? Yeah. Whoops. I just dropped mine in the recorder. That's fine. All right, shall we? We shall. Cheers, madam. Cheers, my dear. Mm -hmm. Very good. Oh my God, that is so good. Yeah, mm -hmm. real good. Oh. I'm oh. eating chips out of my hand that fell. Mm. I love getting that little chocolate chip bite. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. This is super good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh man. I cannot wait to feed these to my family for dinner. <laughs> I say that's a healthy dinner. It's got cheese. Mm -hmm. It's got dairy. Mm -hmm. Sugar's a grain. It's been a very unhealthy birthday weekend. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. There's something so uh, fantastic when you can present and share food with with friends yes. and strangers and make new friends by doing it. And your Instagram feed's just gorgeous. Like I cannot wait to try some of this stuff. <laughs> Yay, I can't wait for people to come to LA. I know there's so many people like you who I've met online. Yeah. Thanks to, I would have never probably had met you had it not been for the pandemic. So this is definitely a bonus result yeah. of having to be stuck in the Zoom world of comedy for quite some time, right? I completely agree. <laughs> such a, it's such an, a weird thing that people, lots of people don't understand, right? But yeah. We are forever bonded by having to do comedy in a way that no one else has ever had to do it. Exactly. It did not, I, did not go well. <laughs> but that's okay. You live and you learn. So now we know, like you said, just a little bit of egg wash goes yeah. a long way with the cannolis. Um, that was definitely like a, a baking show moment, though, where they were sticking on there. But like a real competitor. It's a, it's a real thing. Cakes do fall, things do happen. It's true. It's yeah. true. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any shows coming up at the end of March that you want to promote? I have a show on Friday, March 19th. Um, that is uh, on Zoom. I'll post that on my um, Instagram, the okay. underscore Danny underscore Brooks. Um, and then I have, an, I have a couple more coming up. On April 25th, I have a Moms Behaving Badly show, which is like a Mother's Day show. Nice. And then there's another one in March. I think it's in March that I'm doing for Dow. But I, my biggest, because I can't remember anything off the top of my head because I'm tired. Um, <laughs> I can definitely just post it on my Instagram if people want to check yeah. it out there. Sorry, my brain just stopped for a second. Did you see it actually stop? <laughs> Just decided that it wasn't cooperating with me. It's like, we're done now. It'll be fine. It'll be fine.